men, women, and children slaughtered by Arab militias. Genocide there has already claimed 400,000 lives. A new firestorm of racist killing is now flaming out of control. Hundreds of thousands are dying. The puzzle, according to psychologist Paul Slovic, is that most of us don't care enough to do anything about it. Slovic has spent his life studying how humans make decisions, be they about love or money. Three years ago, he set out to discover why those humans were deciding to do nothing about mass murders going on in Darfur. I started to read uh, the columns that uh, Nicholas Kristof was publishing in the New York Times about the brutal attacks which had taken hundreds of thousands of lives and which were being ignored by the world. At the same time, I also found uh, Samantha Power's book titled A Problem from Hell, America and the Age of Genocide, you know, numerous instances of genocides, and in every case was little or no response. And that was very impactful on me to the fact that it's not just Darfur that we're not responding to, but we never really responded to mass murder. Slovik became obsessed with one question. Why have humans tolerated genocides throughout history? One possible explanation, a phenomenon called psychic numbing. The psychic numbing is a very important term that was coined by Robert Lifton in his study of the aid workers at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. There was so much carnage and human wreckage that they had to turn off their feelings, in a sense, in order to be able to do their jobs. But Slovik noticed a profound irony. While humans are numbed by mass suffering, we care deeply about individuals, even ones from other species. Her face is unmistakable. The face so while the media neglects genocide, a story about a missing child like Madeleine McCann captures the attention of the world, and does so for months. The Fine Madeleine Fund raised over two million dollars. Slovik wanted to understand scientifically why this should be so, and what, if anything, could be done about it. His first insights concerned how humans perceive change. When you start with a very dim light, it doesn't take much change for you to notice the difference. Human visual perception discriminates tiny changes when the signal is small. When there is a soft light, the eye easily notices one additional light. But the situation is completely different with large quantities of light. In a bright scene, illuminated by many candles, the light added by one new candle is hardly noticeable. As the magnitude increases, uh, we, we become less sensitive to change. This psychophysical response can explain why if we think that there are 200,000 people who were killed in Darfur and suddenly we learn it's 400,000, we don't feel any different. Slovic reasoned that if our physical senses become less sensitive in the face of larger quantities, our moral senses might also act the same way. But then he and his colleagues did an experiment which showed matters were even worse. The experiment tested how much money people would pay to help children in distress. When subjects were shown an individual suffering child and asked to help, they donated lots of money. But when they were told this child was simply one of many millions who were suffering, donations dropped dramatically. It's not that we're just, you know, less sensitive to big numbers, it's that we suddenly lose it completely. The response just disintegrates and eventually goes down to zero, and that's what we call a collapse model. It was a disturbing conclusion. To help our survival, evolution had designed us to care about individuals, but it had not prepared us to empathize with mass murder. Having understood the puzzle, he wanted to do something about it. Slovik the scientist became Slovik the advocate. Today, he spends his time working with the Lane County Darfur Coalition and lectures all over the world. This research, which focused on genocide, has captured his interest not only professionally, but personally. Slovik hopes to awaken people's emotions by telling individual stories. And my message to American people, not to forget us. You must stay with us, uh, because without your help, we don't see any hope. And no, no hope at all. Personal tales, unlike dry statistics, 
can hold the public's attention. Photojournalist and speaker Paul Jeffrey has applied this theory when he talks about what he's seen in Darfur. Before, I often thought that if you just tell the people the numbers and you, you, know, you impress them with the, the widespread nature of this um, genocide, that that would be enough. Um, and people do need to hear that, but they also need to anchor that down to the life story of one individual. Slovik realizes that his campaign to build awareness about the Darfur atrocities will be hard. We have been successful in getting more and more people interested and educated and to care. And that's good, and it's really happening, and it's happened around the country as well. But we're now in the sixth year of the genocide in Darfur. I have hope because I know that people are compassionate and, and do good things. His own research suggests that he's likely to fail to change human nature, but his moral obligations compel him to try anyway. There should never be a time when we fail to protest, and that's what we're doing. We're not going to stop protesting.